what we, the oceans are acidifying. They're, they're basically acidifying since human beings emit CO2 into the atmosphere. And we can measure this. We can measure that the ocean has already acidified by 0.1 pH units, which doesn't sound very much, but if you look at the increasing acidity because of that, it has increased by 30% already. We know if we continue to emit CO2 at the rate that we are presently doing, the ocean will be acidified by another 100% well before the end of the century. Um, and this, by far, is beyond what organisms have experienced in their evolutionary history for at least the last 20 million years. Okay, so what we see here on the pier are the floating devices of what we call mesocosms. Um, they're used to enclose large bodies of water with all the organisms in there and we'll use them to study ocean acidification and the effects it has on marine organisms. So we add CO2 to those water columns to reach levels which are projected to occur in 20 years, and 40 years, 60 years from now and so on. And then we just observe what the enclosed community does over a period of five to six weeks. Okay, what we're seeing here is a pterapod, which can be found in the polar oceans. This is a, basically a winged snail producing a carbonate shell, which is uh, our main interest, since we are fearing that the present ocean acidification may um, uh, make it difficult for them to produce their shell and maybe also dissolute the shell. The only way to avoid disastrous consequences for our marine ecosystems is to limit our emissions of CO2 as soon as possible. We all depend on healthy oceans, both for our global climate but also as a source of food to millions of people around the world. The financial investment required to turn this trend is minimal and we need to start to act now.